Ain't you sick of giving me your money? Oh, this. Oh, oh. I know yeah. he didn't do it, baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where you going? No, I'm about to go make these trouble. <laughs> Y'all come from my head to the intro, you know, <laughs> right? I like how we put that together. Um, but anyway, it's your beat, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I was one of them late night sessions, just like, oh, this this kind of right here, right? You know what I'm saying, let me put them drums on that little chop. But um, yeah, for those who don't know me, if this is your first time tapping into the Black Currency Podcast, I am Bradley D'Lo Thomas by day. I'm a marketing strategist at a biotechnology company, and by night, I am a passionate producer slash writer MC, and I'll pass the mic. Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Opal Elisa, by day, director of multicultural business strategy for a financial company, and by night, by passion, by everything else, I am a poet, MC, and author. What's going on? It's your boy, Corey Dashed Up Whitmore. Yeah, I'm still a little sick, sound a little nasally. Uh... You know, I'm still doing the Media 22, Radio 22, uh, Studio 22 thing. And I think right now that's all I got because I just put in my resignation letter. Woo! Mogul. Drop the mic. Okay. Keep it moving. Gangsta. Time to get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta, do, you gotta do what you gotta do. For real though, okay? For real. It's on these people in Madison be tripping. Yes. Man. Man, I already know. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I can get into what we're going to talk about today. We... We're going to reflect on some of our past personal uh, experiences with money uh, mm -hmm. that some of y'all might be able to relate to. Um, and if you do relate to it, uh, there is a way out uh, to, you know, to change your financial situation. So um, usually I start off, I start, you know, I start the song off. But right. this time, um, remix. I, I think I'm gonna uh, <laughs> bring it to the trailer. You know what right, I'm saying, right, so Mr. Right. Mr. 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 Slash. I do everything. Uh, you know what I'm saying every you know every podcast. Right. I'm, I'm in the studio. I'm still making beats. I'm still doing shows. You know, I'm right. still you know I'm still building up the community the best way I know how. So, mm -hmm. uh, Corey, what can are there any things, any any topics that you want to share with the people related to finances that have been like stepping stones for you to become a better person financially? Well, I think, you know, I, I want to use something from my, um, from my entrepreneurial background when I had my first business, Deuce Deuce Entertainment, but it, it really applies to finances, personal finances and stuff across the board. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for those that don't know, I, I started a, a small music label in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin called Deuce Deuce Entertainment as an LLC. Um, started in 2005. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I thought I could, <laughs> why I thought I'd be the next Dame Dash or something. You had like the that. vision. You had but, the vision. But man, you know, I felt. I think I felt I had something to prove. But um, financially, especially with with a with a lot of businesses and a lot of people living paycheck to paycheck, like you're not doing a lot of future planning. And and what I found ourselves doing and happens in the personal, and I know that some people bring this up. As soon as you get it, as soon as you would get money coming in, money would go out. Mm -hmm. As soon as money came in, money would go out. And right. it took me it took me some years in really getting into my second business, Media Twenty Two, um, before I was able to learn to to. Do enough financial planning to basically, uh, you know, as we talked about in the first episode, having like in a rainy day fund, because, yeah. you know, there's always mm -hmm. something that comes up, something that's going to happen that's going to be not anticipated, not planned. And 
can have really an impact and set you back if you financially can't handle what may, what may occur, whether it be mm-hmm. something happens with the car, whether it be, you know, uh, storms, tornadoes, I mean, anything, stuff can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the music realm, what, what happened was we had, when we, in 2008, we were experiencing like a lot of growth um, right. as far as having more people come on board, more people being able to uh, access us. Now we're starting to go out of town finally and like mm-hmm. perform and do all these things. But financially, we weren't we weren't stable enough. I remember, I think we were coming home from, I want to say a show in like Green Bay or Appleton or something, yeah. got into an accident. You know, luckily everybody was okay, but it was a late drive back. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, car was wrecked. <laughs> I mean, car was in bad shape. Um, and, you know, not having anything set aside because we had basically spent, spent our last dollar in the budget and getting up there doing the yep, show. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. like, it was something that, that derailed us for a while. So, something that we we couldn't something that we didn't plan for some of course you don't expect but not setting aside enough money um to be able to overcome these things set us back as a label and as a business and Mm -hmm. what i'm trying to do moving forward in in that case especially with media 22 um is at least and i was i was talking about this with somebody because we're talking about venues yeah. And we're talking about money and and off we were to get the venue and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. and I told bro, and, and it, it was like a light bulb in my head. I'm like, yo, if we ain't at least, two, if we don't have at least two, three months rent wise, expense wise already mm-hmm. in the bank, like I'm not even making that move. Yeah, yeah. And, right. it's, and it's the same way now with the business with Media 22, knowing mm-hmm. that if something happens, for whatever reason, or, you know, we're, you know, I don't know, some, something crazy happens with the equipment or everything blows or something like that. And then it's soccer or something, we lose all equipment or we can't record or do podcasts for a month, mm-hmm. but do we have enough set to the side to still be sustainable? And right. and so we've, we've tried to operate as a two month, if not three month ahead, um, just so that we have reserves, just so we have that rainy day. The right. other thing which I know I know DLO may frown at, but because, because okay, okay, I'm listening, I'm listening. Investment in stocks, mm-hmm. if for whatever reason I had to pull something out for a month to maybe catch up on if I if I have rent or something like that, in which um, I have another separate reserve from just what we're setting aside for rent and expenses moving forward. Right. Because you never know what your health is going to be. You never know what, what, what catastrophe, what what could possibly happen. And to always try and set yourself up in the entrepreneurial world, but definitely in 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 the in the personal finances world. You know, especially when you're dealing with family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. So the ability now to be in a place to say, hey, if something goes crazy, I still have a month, two months worth to still run this business, to get back on my feet if something mm-hmm. happens or if I lose an employee or something, have them get back on their feet mm-hmm. and also be able to pull from another reserve, something right. I would reluctantly want to pull from, but still have something set up in stocks. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like creating those safety, you know, those safety baskets for you. Um, right. there, you think, there may be things I have to pull out of the business because something personally may happen, but then I mm-hmm. still have someplace else to go. So, you know, my lesson for folks, and I'm sure you guys are going to echo a lot of this too, is is really you've got to start setting yourself up in that rainy day fund. It's getting out of it's getting out of the the 24 hour thought process and getting more into the looking into mm-hmm. the future thought process, which is mm-hmm. which is hard yeah. because and many times my, myself, I was like that. I was in survival mode. So my, yeah. my brain was only operating in 24 hours. Yeah. Right, you gotta get right, your brain yeah. operating in the 48. 72, one week, two week, one month. It's a process. But if mm-hmm. you're able to really start to train your brain to do those things, um, you'll be some of those, some of those bad luck things and some of those hits that everybody takes in life. That's just what, mm-hmm. what life is. You're better to able to absorb them and still move forward. 
And I, right. I think that's important mm-hmm. in anything financial. Like I said, whether it's business or whether it's you know entrepreneurial. Mm. Were you doing this? Were you doing this at the same time you were working a job, or were you full time just running this business? No, I was I was doing it while I was working a job. So mm-hmm. okay. in the All beginning, right. siphoning off some of that money from that paycheck to go to to go to stocks and things of that sort um, was crucial, and, and really being able to do that. Um, I bet. Things service based sometimes can be slow, and especially moving here, move or moving back here. But it's been so long; like it takes time to build up networks and clientele. I mean, networks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. you come to a new place, and you don't know nobody. You can't expect to be bringing in, you know, so much money. You got to go and spend time in the community and build those relationships and things of that sort. People got to build trust with you, build confidence in that what you're offering is something that's worth value. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts on facts. Yeah, so I definitely got some stuff to add to that. But first, uh, with the deuce deuce, I always wanted to know where where does the deuce deuce in twenty two come from? Is that we, like a basketball number, or what does that come from for you? So it it it's it's two things. <laughs> <laughs> it was my basketball number in high school, but we, but the first studio was on twenty second in Kilbourne. Ah, oh, sweet. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's, so that's just I love that. It. 22, yeah. 22, 22. Nice. Yeah, that's fire. That's fire. Yeah, so I, I feel what you're saying. What you are talking about with the business, like I did that with my life, right? So mm-hmm. I was the same way. And for sure, it comes from that survival mode. But like, that's something that you can look back and see. But while mm-hmm. you're in it, you're not thinking like that, right? You're, for me, it was like thinking like um, reward, right? First, it was like, let me get to a point where I can pay the bills on time. Because I would not say... For most of my life, I was paycheck to paycheck. I was mm. paycheck to the Wednesday before the Friday paycheck, right? Like mm. it was like two yeah. days before mm-hmm. I would run it. I can tell you right now, Woodman's on the West Side. If you ain't got no money, <laughs> this is not advice. <laughs> but this, <laughs> <laughs> let me let me disclaim that right now. I would Woodman's like is one of the rare places you could still in recent years like write a check for gas, right? Mm-hmm. So if if you if I would write a check on Wednesday after three p.m., I knew it would not go through. Until after Friday, when my when my direct deposit will come back. So mm. I say all that to just say that that's how broke I was, less than paycheck to paycheck. And so once you get from paycheck to paycheck, and then you're actually like okay to pay the bills, right? So maybe it's twenty dollars left in the right. account when the direct deposit hits for the next two weeks. Mm-hmm. I was in the mentality of like, I make forty thousand, I spend forty thousand. Okay, now I make fifty thousand, I spend fifty thousand. Make a hundred thousand, spend a hundred thousand. Like, did right. not know that that's not what you do, right? Because that's just how, like you said, that twenty-four hour living. That's exactly yeah. how that was for me. So it was totally a a mindset. When, like, when we talk about books, that's why I always bring up um, the Jen Sincero book, "You Are a Badass," because that was one of the first things that made me like, yeah. oh, I gotta think about this a little bit differently, and yeah. then really think about, just like you said, like it's not living above your means, right? Because I think once you get to a place, you think, okay, okay, this is my means now. And I'm supposed uh-huh. to spend uh-huh. all that. Uh-huh. And that's not what wealthy people do. They don't spend all of their money. They don't spend nearly, they don't spend hardly right. any of their money once they get to, you know, an upper echelon. Yeah. Um, but I was the same way. So how you were with business, I was like that with myself. Um, and I think that that is like, it's so dangerous. Like luckily nothing like big happened that set me up, but it did get me in trouble as I shared, you know, on an earlier episode, episode two, had to use payday lenders, right? Because I did mm-hmm. not have that cushion. So um, I work with credit unions a lot and we share the stat that um, the majority of Americans don't have $400 to help with an emergency. And mm-hmm. that lack of not having $400, as you say, Corey, when the car breaks down, right. you got a medical bill, yep. mm-hmm. it'll just set everything off, Back. right? Yep. Right, then you're yep. negative, you got bank fees on top of that, mm-hmm. can't pay the next bill, not a car, can't take you, to work, right? Now you're missing wages and it just can spiral people into just a, a hole that you feel like you can't get out of. So okay. I feel it hundred percent. So I think just as you say, folks doing that with, with businesses and your experience also mm-hmm. like with our lives, right? And really just changing that mentality to be like, you do not and should not spend all you make personal right. or with or with business. Some of that has to be mm-hmm. saved and some of it has to be really truly invested now to be able to beat inflation which is like we we're not old enough to have seen inflation like this before right so this is a whole new territory and it could just probably i don't know we'll get worse before it gets better 
Yeah. So, um, Opa, I can relate. I can definitely relate to to what you were saying. What was like, what was like that that moment of clarity for you when you was like, "Yo, this shit ain't uh, 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 like I gotta, <laughs> I gotta change something around," you know, for the better. Like, yeah. was there an it event was, that happened no. where you were like, "This no." <laughs> it was like be. It, it was two things. I think one was just that, like, um, finally feeling like I was making a good living but not feeling like I was making a good living because I didn't feel like I had that safety. And I would say what changed the most is like being around people who were better with money, right? Mm -hmm. Being around people who were used to making higher incomes and seeing how they were. Like, it's like the cliches that you hear, like the richest person in the room got on the older shoes and really starting to see, doesn't have the best car, right? That's pulling up and really being able to see like, okay, this is what they're buying. It's more peace of mind in future versus something shiny and new. So for me, it had a lot to do with just um, adding new people to my circle and being around new folks and, um, you know, not switching up, but being enhanced by and seeing how other folks are living. Because I think that you just don't know what you don't know, right? Like um, I shared before my background Mm -hmm. from Westford Ridge forever, um, low income neighborhood and, my mom was on welfare and then disability. So that's a check come every month and a check spent every month. And that's all I knew. So mm-hmm. until you get around people who are spending their money differently and really seeing that that's not just something people say, that's not just an ideal, but that's like how people live. I think that really changed my aspirations for things and kind of how I moved with stuff. That's what's up. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I can relate to both of y'all stories. Um, particularly in my life with uh with with dealing with money just more more about like handling money mm. um and like you said like living living a lifestyle that makes you feel good but doesn't really make you feel good what are you trying to are you trying to purchase this american dream when in reality nobody nobody has that money in the bank for that emergency yeah. and that's that's like super important for me it was you know when i graduated from college in my first job, um, I had never really seen my own money like in my pocket coming in. So it was like, yo, you know, like I thought forty two thousand dollars to me was just like that. Man, that's that's a lot of money, you know. And, you know, to somebody, it is a lot of money if you know how, you know, especially if you know how to manage it mm-hmm. and do the right thing with it. But I didn't. So I just got happy with that number. And I remember I went to Chicago. I bought some like. Hundred fifty dollars shoes. I went to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got some. I got a nice little <laughs> shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my, you know, me and my at the time, um, the fiance. We went out and got got a whole bunch of food and kicked it all in Chicago, right? And you know, this is when I didn't understand credit either. So when you get more money, people are gonna go give you more credit. So you get more credit, mm-hmm. and then you live in this lifestyle. I didn't understand that. You know, I can't go over thirty percent of my credit. Uh, I didn't understand like, you know, the utilization. I didn't I didn't get any of it. So eventually all that stuff caught up to me and I was just, you know, I didn't think nothing of it. I was like, yeah, there's a store right here. I got to check, you know, I'm going to go get some money. I'm, I know I'm going to get paid on Friday. So I'll just get the money now. But these these payday lending stores are basically robbing people hmm. um, and making you pay astronomical amounts of 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 interest so i got into a situation where it was like man i'm i i had like no lie i had like a loan at like damn near every store in madison you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i would just take out one to literally pay off the other to take out another one to pay off the other to pay off the other right. and i was like i, I didn't get it because i you know eventually I had to sit down and see like where is all my money going you know how much money am i really bringing in that's another thing i think people don't really understand mm. either is what the taxes and the benefits Great. are going to take out of your paycheck. Right. Yes. So when someone tells you, when someone tells you a hundred thousand dollars, you probably bring it home like seventy. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, right. or you know, seventy to sixty, sixty, sixty-five percent of what that check is, depending on how you know, depending on how your 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 stuff is set up and how much you know exemptions you you have coming out of your money. So that was really a learning point for me in reading books too. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually running businesses. So I ran a network marketing business uh, for some time and just being around people who are more business minded 
mm-hmm. kind of t- started teaching me and teaching me That's about right. these books and teaching me how to do all these things, you know, because I grew up pretty privileged, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like my, you know, I told y'all earlier in the episode, my dad was doing real mm-hmm. estate. So I was, I could just pop in and work for him, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I was just went around with money. But you know what I'm saying? But you, you think that's life. Like, you know, yeah. you you don't understand yeah. that he didn't set up a whole system for you. And like, you know, mm-hmm. he's worked his ass off to get here. Mm-hmm. You're young, you know. I mean, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go in the club, you know, you're gonna throw it off, you're gonna get some drinks, you know, you're gonna buy some clothes, you know, you're gonna waste it instead of investing it. Okay. Man, it, just hearing these stories and like I can't the thing that 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 shines through in, in and we all said it is environment hmm. like when, when i think back to um being in milwaukee and having like the record label thing and and ultimately fe- you know feeling like man this is i want to do music but i don't want to do it in this way um you know i think that environment changed changed and created other opportunities me coming here to madison and and hooking up with like Karen and 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 um, you can and doing things with them open up so many other possibilities mm-hmm. to nice. how revenue can come in and how different yeah. th- different things can happen and, and how you can uh, create programming things like that. If I was if I had stayed in Milwaukee, I don't know if I would have been able to see to be able to see what Media Twenty Two mm-hmm. could be. Mm. Um, which is crazy. And, and yeah. that's what was going in my head, like as as you guys were speaking and talk about influence of, of environment and, and people around you and being able to see different things. Like, I don't think I would have seen what Media 22 is today if I would have stayed there in that same environment. I had to, yeah. I had to be around different people doing different things. And even that even though that was from a nonprofit perspective, it showed me it showed me different things that I wouldn't have gotten exposed having my head down, being in the grind, you mm. be going to build. Mm. I just didn't have other, yeah. other people around me that were showing me different things. Right. Um, for me to expand my knowledge base and say, you know what? No, I should actually approach it like this. I should twist it like this. And then it just created all those, those other possibilities. Um, and even, and even thinking about like, like my pops, my pops was entrepreneurial. So like, Hey, remember when Amway was a thing? I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I still, I know people who do it right now. I still catch yeah. shit from every now and then. I mean, we had the meetings the at the house yeah, yeah. every yeah. once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He was messing with property for a little bit in, in in Pennsylvania and stuff like that. So for me to come out like after college and say, "Yo, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start my own business," that had to come from somewhere. You got, you got to mm-hmm. see it. Yeah. And just how much that 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 can change your trajectory. So, you know, for people that that are listening that say, hey, I may not have that group. You got to go. Fi- you got to go out and find yeah. that group. Yeah. True. If, if you want to change the trajectory of, of where things are going, if you feel like things are leveling off or flattening off, flattening off, you need to go and find those people. Be a fly right. on the wall. Right. Stop. Let me just sit in. Mm-hmm. Like I remember when I first came to those meetings. I didn't say nothing in the first three months because I didn't know everything that was going on. I'm trying to figure out, okay, this is how y'all do things. Oh, you do this. Okay. This is, I'm just coming from the boys and girls club. This is all brand new. Mm -hmm. This is all brand new. Like I I know music. I know how to, you know, do those things, but to expand it upon that and to make it even bigger, I still get to do music, but now it's all these other facets as well. Like I would have gotten that without that exposure. Mm. Right. Yeah, that's so like that point you bring up, Corey, just like it's just that thing like no one does it alone. Right. Right. You just you you can't. And I think about like you brought up you can like you can is made up of and all the folks they're affiliated with of people who are doing their own thing. Right. Are really good at their own thing can sell the same. But the power. Right. When I think about like Mad Lit like that, like Mm -hmm. what? Like I'm telling you, like I I, I did part of Mad. I did um, a piece of Mad Lit. Lit and let me tell you, I did not expect that big old stage. <laughs> <laughs> I started walking down towards the square and I said, I know this is not that. 
Yeah. But that is like, and I'm from Madison, and we've been doing music in Madison. I've been doing music with DLO in Madison for sh- let's age ourselves 20 years. We're coming up on 20 years here, oh, right? Mm-hmm. I ain't never in my life seen no stage like that put on by no black folks, put right. on by artists at that, right? Everybody who's an artist ain't no way one of us, maybe paying one, but other than that, ain't no way one <laughs> of us, right? <laughs> Could have got a right. stage like that with the production, with the advertisement, with the merch with everything just set up. And I just think that that's the power. And to me that uh, of people working together. And to me, that was also a mind shift, just like the the yeah. money and not living day to day. It's also like not doing it by yourself mm, because I think when right. you're talented, be it art or be it finance, that's be it anything, true. you've probably grinded by yourself for a grip, right. right? You probably been the one doing it mm-hmm. and to have to be, get that trust and connect with folks, but that's the only way to grow. So I feel that, a hundred percent because that was for me too like you you gotta collab and find your people and let them let them teach you um because that that to me too is is the only way so much more power when you're connected with folks because otherwise Uh maybe somebody will find your website maybe they'll trust you Mm -hmm. off social media but probably probably not you're gonna have to somebody will have to vouch for you for somebody to to run some money your way Mm. yeah that's facts right there yeah we need each other Mm-hmm. We need each other, and I think that's what a lot of people just—they—they—they are—they're afraid because, it, it, you know, if you ask for help, you might come across as weak or you know mm-hmm. you incompetent. When in reality, it's yeah. like there's you're you're never gonna you shouldn't be a jack of all trades. You right. know, it's not really mm-hmm. healthy to be one. Um, you should really be a master of a few, but then reach out to someone mm-hmm. else that's better than you at something um, in order for you to grow. Otherwise, you just, mm-hmm. it's just going to be harder. But yeah, that's a hard lesson, Opal. I know what you mean. Like, mm-hmm. just putting your nose down. Oh, I'm going to do it. Oh, I, I gave it. I passed you the ball. You dropped it. All right. I'm going to just take it to the hole next time. <laughs> you know, hey, I'm going to take the ball out of bounds, pass it to myself, go up the court, you know, set, set my own pick. Like, 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 you can't do all this. But I, th- I think the other part of it, and maybe, and, and I think, and, and I, and because I know your stories, I know this is part of it. But, you know, I just want to I, I want to make sure to point out that, you know, part of the time of growth, especially for me personally, um, in trying to when I was transitioning between business was kind of at the when I was getting close to the end of the, the label thing, huh. I had thrusted myself into everything self-improvement. Hmm. Yeah. And that's where yeah. me as as a person that has hated reading for, for as long as I've been asked to do it, um, <laughs> thrusted myself into those things and started learning a lot of those concepts. Like for me, like for me, Les Brown is is who, who really kicked it off. And I started getting into uh-huh. Zig Ziglar. Then I started mm-hmm. looking into yeah. Tony Robbins. And then it yes, was it yes. just yeah. avalanched uh-huh. um, from there. And I can't even, I can't, I don't even think I can tell you what got me to that point because my mom would actually be playing Les Brown and I'd be like, turn that mess off. Like I wasn't <laughs> trying to hear it in the car because she'd have the tape. She'd put in the tape. It's like, you know, make it or Les Brown. <laughs> she she you. Ah, <laughs> all right, let's throw in sweet love again. <laughs> <laughs> but she would play it and I just, yeah. I didn't have mm-hmm. the capacity for it. Uh-huh. Yeah. But something, Something tipped off where I had grabbed one, and then I was like, "Oh man, what else does he have? Oh man, what else would he have? Oh man, what else do he have?" Hey, yo, pops, you still got them tapes out there? I gotta find a tape player. But if y'all, I know you got all that stuff in that back room that you ain't doing nothing with. It's probably back there. You find them, yeah. them. And then I latched on to this because all these guys quote each other, mm, like nice. in their motor in their motivational speeches. It's yeah, like yeah. so and so said that, and it's like, "Oh, I need to check out who so and so is too." Yeah, and it yeah. just avalanched it, and it's weird for release in my story. Like that paralleled, you know, the transition between that business to this business and doing more. And I think my my brain being more open to different possibilities mm-hmm. of how this can be sustainable right. with the record label thing. I think I, I think we really limited ourselves, saying, "Well, it's either this, this, or this." Then these are the possibilities, and we got to keep doing this. Where where when we talk about revenue streams, it's a multitude of things. It is multiple things mm-hmm. that that billionaires, tr- trillionaires yeah. need. Yes. 
just for it to be sustainable. So uh, as a as a person that's just on the come up, you can't limit yourself <laughs> to saying, uh, I got the check, mm -hmm. and then I got this, and then I'll be good. No, it's and, and that's what I hope people have gotten from you know from th some of these episodes is that here are here are an option. Here's a menu of things that you can choose from to really try to create all those revenue streams. But for me, and I definitely want to hear what you guys, you know, have to say that self improvement binge. And I'm still, I can't call it a binge because I'm still doing it really <laughs> is what opened up the floodgates for me. I, I love that. And shout out to Tony Robbins. Um, I'm a fan mm -hmm. of his too. Um, his change your state. I use that every time. If I got to speak mm -hmm. for work, if I'm doing a performance, he's like, change your state. You'll find me somewhere but at backstage, like yep. going like this. <laughs> 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 because he, he, he's on point. Um, I can relate to that core because I, I grew up in my family. I was made fun of all the time because mm -hmm. I've been reading self-help books since I was a teenager. Like legit, Ooh, like we'll wow. make fun of me like what's wrong with you and I feel like um for me it's it's Tony Robbins it's Ayanna Van Zandt uh mm. Russell Simmons has been huge yep. to me especially yeah. with the yeah. with the money and the art mm -hmm. um just like and I, I continue I continue to read a whole bunch of stuff a lot of people be um go to spiritual for me too right so I mm. also read a lot of T.D. Jakes uh, yeah. I know mm, yep. Joe Olsen has some controversy but that man also got some good words please believe mm -hmm. me I've read mm -hmm. um all of his books too and I feel like it is that piece of like, and and no matter who you read, finance is a piece yep. because you yep. have to have, right? Yeah. No matter who it is, because you've got to have that stability um, wow. from which to grow. You've got to have um, that foundation in that piece. And I also feel like um, that getting made fun of, like you're going to have to do that. You got to grow through that and you got to be solid yeah. and okay with being different if you right. want to do something different. That's always been a theme that I've seen from those who I follow and in myself too. Like if you actually want to change something, get some thick skin um, because you're going to look weird. Right. You're going to look different. And I feel like that with entrepreneurship, too. How do y'all feel? The really question for y'all in the black community. Like, right. I, I will I will say the PG version, but entrepreneur mm -hmm. Negro. OK, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We don't, we don't value it. Like, how do y'all feel about that? Because I feel like. Um, if you tell somebody you starting a business, oh, you a loser. Or what 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 do he do? Oh, you know, he got his own business. Oh, he broke, he ain't got no job, yeah, yeah, right? Like yeah, that's right. what comes up. Yeah. So do y'all feel like our culture, uh, and I feel like it's changing, um, but have y'all felt that too, that our culture has looked down upon, you know, having, you know, trying to have your own versus like just go to school, just get a good job, just get a state job and keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. I think uh I think anytime you are you a black person and you're trying to do something new and unique that doesn't um fit into what they have a mold for you, like this vision that they have for you, um, they'll start to put you down or call you weird. Um, you know, since you in the books, you know, it's not it wasn't cool to be a nerd. That's that's the kind of environment that I grew up in. So it was just like it's it was, it's weird because I don't see other cultures really doing that, you know what I'm saying? Right. Matter of fact, they'll rather pay a higher price to um you know deal you know deal with someone that looks like them that's from the same culture it's from the same mm -hmm. neighborhood you know our dollar doesn't circulate in our neighborhood it only goes like one time right. you know and then we we spending it you know to you know to some other person um and but if we open up that same shop no one would come in because you know they got a problem with you know the way the floor look or the, the artwork mm -hmm. in there it's like it's it's all these weird excuses um so yeah i definitely feel like that's an issue uh, but I wanted to, I wanted to kind of go back to the, 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 the self-improvement. Like I actually feel weird if I'm not reading a book now or listening mm -hmm. to something like, mm -hmm. you know, to get my mind mm -hmm. set straight, you know, um, one of the self-improvement books that I, I actually love, um, is, is the Bible, man. Like I, I read, I've read the Bible mm -hmm. and the whole thing. So, and all the stuff, a lot of the stuff in the Bible, if you listen to the quotes, it connects right back to all of the personal development that you hear mm -hmm. from Les Brown, yeah. from Zig Ziglar, from uh, another one for me. I really love Jim Rohn. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, another one for just straight mind state raw is just David Goggins. Like that's my mm -hmm. guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I love his, I love his, um, you know, can't hurt me mentality. So it's just, it's just a part of me now. Like if I'm, you know, I, I listen to audio, like I used to listen to red man, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I just wake yeah. up. I like that. Up that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, you know, this is my joint, you know? And so I'm trying to get my daughter into it. And I know right now she's like, oh, dad, like, that's kind of, that's kind of whack. Why don't you put some music on? 
put some Doja Cat or something on or say somebody else on, right? I'm like, all right, that's cool. At least I'm gonna infect you. I'm gonna infect you with this with this personal development because eventually you're gonna hear it again and you're gonna be like, damn, wait a minute. Pops right. already showed me that. Mm-hmm. He showed me that for a reason. Right. So it's like, you know, people can hear, but until they're ready to listen, ain't nothing gonna change. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think I think you know that goes to that environment and sometimes sometimes you're just not ready. Yeah. But sometimes you're presented information and you just at that time you can't absorb it. But then you ex- you absorb it later and you're like, I got it. That's that's what I should have been doing yeah. and, and, and things of that sort. Yeah. Um, yeah I, and, and going back to the entrepreneurial thing, like. It's been weird and I and I wonder I wonder where that is, because with everything going on in the world going on in the world, I feel like um that it's almost like an issue of it's weird that we had that you know back in the day we had there there's an era where there's a where around the country there was all these great cities that had a lot of black businesses great thriving Mm -hmm. black neighborhoods i think of um my mom's neighborhood Inslee, um which is right outside of birmingham alabama and when I look at the pictures and how and how beautiful it was and how they could go to the corner stores and they were all black owned mm-hmm. and, and going back and seeing that it's bars up, boarded, broken mm-hmm. windows. And it's like, I wonder if 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 part of the part of the things that many of those business owners had to go through, not mentioning Black Wall Street now, okay. um, mm-hmm. you know, parents felt it was safer to tell kids mm-hmm. to say, hey. Stick in the books, Ooh. get it to a, something that's safe. It's deep Be, because of because of the trauma incurred from those mm-hmm. who did step out to Ooh. be entrepreneurial Ooh. and the things that they had to go through. Yeah. I wonder if that Ooh. feeds into that because that's the word. because my my mm-hmm. mom was like, but you know, my dad was doing entrepreneurial thing. My mom was like, stick to the books, get up, you know, get a steady job. Da 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 da, da. and my. You know, I, I tried that, but that's that just hasn't been my fit. Mm. Yeah. That's just not how I've been made. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if mm-hmm. from what she's seen that everyone is going to be protective of their child. That's true. Woo. That's a great point, Corey. Just that's a whole that. other episode right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and now yeah. that's episode. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is the route for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. But it just, it plays a Man, mind. I wish I had more time. Because I really would like to <laughs> dig into that now. I'm like, yeah. man, you didn't, you didn't went into Ooh. a whole nother, another, another zone with that one, yo. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. No deep. Well, that was a good conversation, y'all. Like always, um, I feel like we always spark each other's minds, and I hope, I hope that in someone listening, I hope this sparks you as well, um, to get into like that mindset, to get into that, uh. At personal development to look at your mistakes and look at those as stepping stones is hey you can't get out of that situation it's just a matter of you getting around the right people in the right environment right mm-hmm. 110% yeah. alright y'all make sure to follow us we on IG of course Black Currency Podcast check out all the videos including this one at YouTube if you're watching it someplace else we're always up on myradio22.com slash Black Currency Podcast you can, you can see it all if you hit the link tree though you can get it all and and, and, and the articles. <laughs> it is what it is. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Much love. Um, yo, make sure to tune in for for our next uh you know backstage pass. These are kind of slick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's definitely a part two to this, Corey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's part two. Yeah, he, he went to another universe. So we, we got to think, <laughs> think inside of the mind of Corey. Word, word. <laughs> That's what's up, y'all. All right, y'all. Have a good one. All right, to our listeners. Have a great one. We'll see you next episode. Peace, peace. Peace. Ain't you sick of giving me your money? Oh, this. Oh, oh. I know he yeah. didn't do it, baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where you going? Now I'm about to go make these drop balls.